Hello everyone, welcome to the fifth week prologue or prologue or however you want to say it, prologue. We were trying to come, we were trying to like basically think about how weird this word is. This word is just ridiculous. Who comes up with these words? I don't It's weird. It's the French, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we are going to be hopping into this week's episode. It's going to be about the Grumman, a.k.a. me. Uh, my character is that, and I am Margaret Crone, and with me is our lovely DM. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, guys. Derek here. Going to <clears throat> going to put Grumman to the test. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit of a different type of episode for Grumman. Uh, if, you've, if you've seen the episodes prior, uh, he's kind of like a, a little dorky character that always brings the humor to the party but I think you're gonna you're gonna see a little bit of his backstory and where he comes from and it's gonna, it's gonna change things for you oh the character progression but Dale, uh, go ahead and uh, paint us the, the picture here I think it's funny that you say brings the humor when he kills a bunch of people <laughs> okay he kills a bunch of people I, I feel like that probably won't change <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but I, I think it's more of like he's not the brightest yeah, yeah the box. he's fun he's fun to watch fun to behold so uh where it was we're actually going to do this at a different time in a different place we're going to go far back into Grauman's past to where he <clears throat> grew up so he actually grew up in the mountainous region it's the galena mountains which are on the periphery of the uh, which kind of surrounds the uh the vasa it's a different country in uh central northern uh Faerun. <clears throat> So Grauman grew up on these mountains and he had a very traditional Orcish upbringing. He grew up amongst an Orcish tribe, which would be the Bone Warriors tribe out in the, the Galena Mountains. The Bone Warriors were a very fierce uh, tribe of Orcs that's, that, I mean, anybody that they came across, they would just crush. They were, they, like most other Orcish tribes, they loved to raid, they loved to fight, they loved to drink. Um, every game that they played was one of competition. Uh, you can see a lot of these these aspects in Grom and nowadays. It's always about rolling the dice or re uh, arm wrestling or combat. It's always about winning, winning, winning. So <clears throat> when we look at all about man, yeah, of course, absolutely. Well, that's that's where the fun is. That's where the excitement is. It must win. So going back into Grom's past, where we are is it's a beautiful day. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, morning where Grauman is. So when I say morning, being in an Orcish tribe, it is actually just pre-dawn. So the sun is starting to sparkle off into the horizon. It's getting to the point where Grauman's probably getting a little bit tired and looking to go to bed because why would he want to be awake all day? He spends his nights awake and his days sleeping. So up in the cold, the brisk mountainside, uh, far up in the north, winds blazing by. Grauman is actually seen out and about with a few of his friends. They're just trying to keep themselves entertained with nothing really to do as of right now. I mean, things are going well in their life. Their ruler is, it, it completely rules all of the lands. Their chieftain brings their tribe much uh, uh, honor with much victory. They, they slaughter much, they eat well, they drink more. It is a fat and happy tribe that, that earns their keep time and time again. So he's out with his friends, uh, playing a, a fun game of theirs, which is, you know, find a goat and see how many limbs you can rip off before it stops moving. And- um, It's horrifying. And he actually hears the, the hoots of excitement as one of his friends must have grabbed a goat nearby. You know, it's like, ah, oh, yeah! And so Gravin quickly rushes over to meet up with his friends, um, racing through the mountains. So as Grauman goes looping through the mountainside, trying to get over to them, he does see that three of his other friends are kind of a master hour where one of them has a goat, and they're kind of like happily uh, uh, cheering as the as the thing is starting to writhe and twitch underneath it. And so just as everybody's coming into view and seeing that it's going to be a big spectacle, he you know knowing that he gets the first blow, grabs the goat and just breaks one of its horns off with a big <laughs> breaks off one of the things, and it just starts. Uh, like baying with uh, with pain and, and whimpering. Grauman approaches the situation and sees this, sees that his friends are having a great time and they're excited. Oh my goodness. Me personally, I'm like horrified of this. <laughs> this is horrible. Uh, but Grauman is probably very excited about this. this is, he wants to get in on it. So um, if he can, he's gonna try to rip off a limb of one of the characters too. Sure, so Grauman comes rushing over and pushing his way through the group and goes to uh, to grab this. So make me an athletics check to push your way through the group really quickly. 
Oh, wow, that's awesome. So for those of you that can't see, uh, the uh, Grava has a 15. So elbowing the, his friends out of the way, is able to grab a nice big grip on the uh, on the goat's, one of its hind legs, and roll me a strength check. Ooh, that's an amazing 19. So Gravin grabs the goat by the leg and rips it clean off. There's blood squirting everywhere. Everybody's cheering, ah! But realizing that this leg came off and, and this thing is screaming as much as it is, they all just start grabbing and breaking and ripping and pulling this thing apart until less than a minute, this thing is just completely torn to shreds and, and is lying there, obviously dead and open. Happy with how they, the, the game went. Everybody grabs a chunk of their own, Grauman being the winner with the biggest uh, piece, the biggest leg, which makes sense because he towers over the other orcs around him. He's a, he's a very large man, <clears throat> even at his young age. And so he has this huge quarter of the, of the goat and sits down and just starts gnawing away at it. His friends sitting around as well, gnawing at it. It's a, it's a happy moment for them. <clears throat> After a bit of uh, disgusting noises as they're kind of like suckling away at the, the meat off the bone, finally the, the sun's starting to come up and it's getting really bright and one turns to the others and says, Ugh, one day, not hide no more. Rule day and night. Yeah, Grauman, Grauman agrees. Grauman's like, indeed, friend, we shall. The other one turns and looks at Grauman as he, as he speaks like he does and goes, yeah, yeah, we kill all the pinkies. We kill all, oh, we kill all the elves and the dwarves that we will roast over spits. Mm. Isn't it exciting, friend? And throws a, a punch into Grauman's arm. Grauman takes the punch and tries to like not flinch as much as possible. Uh, and then he gives him a punch back in, uh, in agreeance. Uh, <clears throat> well, Grauman takes the hit. The one he delivers, though it's playful, is significantly heavier than the guy next to him. It's like, Doof. oh. You're lucky it's, we head back or Smash your face with rock, says the uh, says the orc that you just hit. Um, as the uh, as the sun rises up a little bit more and everybody's like finishing up their the the food that they're eating their dinner, they all kind of get up and start making their way back to where it is that their their tribe has set up camp for now. So <clears throat> they start walking their way together, the four of them, and uh, one of them st still I suppose being an optimist. Uh, the same as before, calls out saying, we live in skins. Soon we have castle. Yeah, uh, one of the other guys uh, turns to him and is like, mm, no castle. Soon we have everything. And they're all kind of like playing and joking with one another, talking about how amazing it's going to be. Um, as they're walking along, um, talking about these things, of course, Grauman involved as well. Off in the distance, they they hear a little bit of noise. They're not entirely sure what it is, but there's a little bit of noise coming off, and so they stop to listen for a second. Um, am I rolling a, a perception check for me? Sure. Uh, passive or what? Um, yeah, just roll perception, yeah, regular. There you go. Wow. So. <clears throat> Everybody kind of stops for a second to, to kind of like listen a little bit further. And Grauman actually climbs up the top of a rock to get like a better look and to, to listen a little bit better. When all of a sudden he sees a big flash of light, almost like an explosion of fire off in the distance from where his, uh, where his tribe is. And, and he hears the sound of combat coming from, uh, from down the way. Turn immediately to your friends to, uh, to tell yeah. them. Yeah, I turn to them and I'm like, Friends, it appears the Bone Warriors are under attack. Rumba's fight. Gather your weapons. Let us go. Uh, they're like, Aah! we fight! <laughs> and so they kind of uh, rushing by and just grabbing mm. up stuff as they go. <laughs> it's funny because as they, as they make their way there, 
this area is so littered with corpses, so littered with bones and bodies of those that the, that the bone warriors have killed so far, and specifically the bones, because they leave them lying about here and there as uh, for two purposes. One, because it's their calling card, and so people know who lies about, and two, is offering to their master. They love to give bones to their master to be rewarded, aren't rewarded for it, the ruler of this land. So they go rushing towards their, their tribe, picking up axe and sword alike as they're, as they're making their way there off these corpses that are just littered about. And as they get closer, the sound of combat just grows louder and louder and louder. Um, when they finally get close enough, they can actually see all the orcs are swarming about and trying to fight. And they're swarming around. There's looks like two small groups of people that, that they're fighting. And every once in a while, you'll see all of a sudden a flash of, of a bluish whitish light as something goes shooting through the air and zaps through a whole bunch of uh, orcs and they just fall dead. I mean, Grauman just stops to behold this for a second, seeing that the four of them are, as they were clambering up towards the, the tribe, they're completely exposed and whatever it is that their tribe is fighting has the ability to just hurl large elements at them. It almost looked like a strike of lightning, but instead of dropping from the sky from a, a robed figure down below. Uh, how sure. does Grauman react to this? Do we see any cover nearby? Yeah, there's tons of tons of mountainous, I mean, your uh, rocks and whatnot all around, yeah. All right, um, I say, watch out, you two, down that way. Zook, come with me. And uh, we kind of take cover and uh, split up the four of us. Um, uh, Zook goes with you, and uh, he's actually the one that is probably the closest friends with. He is the one that was throwing the punch at you earlier and everything. You've known him uh, pretty much your whole life. So uh, you and Zook go around one way, as the other two go the other way, and you start inching your way towards the towards the tribe. Roll me a stealthy check to try to make your way uh, there. Awesome. Uh, so seeing your uh, seeing what you're doing, uh, Zook does the same. Oh Except no, Zook! Zook rolled a seven, I rolled a fourteen. He's way more clumsy than you are. Exactly that, a seven and a fourteen. Way more clumsy than you are. So as he keeps clambering on the rocks and whatnot, you're just like kind of holding him back, like stay here for a second, and you go inching a little bit further. But what you see is actually there's this large burling man. He's wearing a a, a big green cloak. He's got a, a big axe in his hands. And he's just this huge burly chested man with this big beard and long hair. And he's just cleaving through orc after orc. He's being surrounded. They're coming at him. But whether he's smacking the back of the pole of his axe or, or pulling up and crushing them with, with, I mean, they're just falling before him. And anytime this seems like there might be an opening as you're watching, right as a, another orc might come up behind him, there's a quick zap of, uh, of lightning or, or a burst of fire that takes that one down. Or this other man who's wearing uh, plate mail that almost seems to shine like gold, sword in one hand, shield in the other, will come and join him and hold back and attack and, and cut through them. You see that these people are working so well together and very much to the detriment of your tribe. I mean, we're gonna keep moving forward. Uh probably go for the caster first. It seems like they're wreaking the most havoc and they have like the most range, so we gotta cut them off. Um, do I see any of my other like uh, tribesmen doing anything to help or? I mean, all of the tribesmen that, if you're talking about the, the your group of four, two of them are trying to sneak around that way at your- I meant the others, the others in my tribe, not just my, my friends. They're all swarming in. They're all furiously throwing themselves at it, crying out screams to Grumsh and the various other orc deities. And they are running in and, and attacking these people at full force. Okay. I, it just seems like they are, they're being cut through like a hot knife and butter. Yeah, we're gonna keep trying at least. So the two of you keep sneaking your way in. You want to get yourself a bit closer to at least one of the casters. So roll for yeah. me a, uh, a stealth check again. Ooh, 21. Amazing. Um, so you're sneaking oh, along as, as oh, quick as you can. You're sneaking along as quick as you can. And as you, you start making your way, like as I, as I said, you told Zook to kind of hang back a little bit as you like look run, 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 look, run, 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 between area and area. At one point in time, you turn back to see how Zook is doing, but, oh man, as you turn around, you see that one of the other people have noticed him. And that big burly man with that ax, he quickly throws down the ax, pulls out a bow, 
and fires a shot right out at Zook, and it lands right in the side of his head, and just he falls instantly, and falls instantly. For a moment, I mean, I, I'm like caught off guard, and uh, I mean, this is my lifelong my lifelong friend, so uh, it takes it takes me a moment, but then I realize as I'm like hearing like the, the, the yelling and the screaming and the, the weapons hitting each other, like the sparks flying. I'm starting to like come back to reality and realizing like, oh shit, there's not much I can do for him. I can't help him. He just got shot in the head. I need to keep going. Mm -hmm. uh, so I turn around quickly and I continue on onward. Uh, as you continue forward, sneaking your way up, trying to get to at least close to one of them, trying to bring your tribe honor by, by taking down one of these foes, you come across a small group of, of dead orcs that are lying at your feet, but one of them is still kind of alive and, 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 and writhing in pain. So as you uh, go walking by, they're obviously looking up at you as you know, blood is pouring out of them. Do you stop to regard them at all or just continue going? Um, do they look like they're so far gone that there's not much I can do? I mean, um, it, most likely the case. That, that is most likely the case. Um, as I walk by, uh, I, I guess I take them out to help them make their way. And as I'm doing so, I say, may we, we, may, uh, may we meet again if Grumsh so pleases. And then you uh, kill him. What is it that you're carrying as a weapon right now? Um, you would have scooped it up on the, uh, on the way towards your- suppose some axes. A couple of axes? Sure. So you're doing like the whole tandem fighting, like, ah. Uh... Yeah. Awesome. And um, so you um, make your way towards, uh, continue making your way towards the wizard. And roll for me one last time, even though that last one was beautiful, a stealth check. Last one was a 21. Oh, it's still a 14, so he's still rolling amazing with this. So Grommet, being as stealthy as he could possibly be, is making his way towards the wizard. I'm little, I'm a little orc. I'm ninja. I can hide behind those piles. So I, I'm as, like five, <laughs> almost six feet. <laughs> As he's making his way there, Gromit every once in a while will poke his head out and look around to see what's going on. And he's counting out how many there are. There's one wizard and another over there that's casting spells. And there's clearly a priest because every time a blow does get landed upon one of the, uh, his companions, he quickly says a prayer and, and they're doing well. There's the man that's completely covered in armor that's gleaming with gold. <clears throat> there's the, the large burly man that's, you know, uh, that, that's um, uh, cutting through people like they're nothing. You know, this large ax just cutting through them um, with, with greatest of ease. There's another man that seems to have, uh, uh, that seems to be walking around and giving prayers over them. So he'll be uh, tossing prayers like blessings at his companions as well, bolstering them so that they're defended. But the strangest one is atop one of the, one of the large stones, there's actually another man who is playing uh, an instrument and uh, hollering at the top of his lungs uh, a, a long ode or, or something. It's in a language you don't understand, but you do notice that his honeyed words do actually um, carry across the loud sound of the combat. And they are, seem to be, every time one of their friends seems to be uh, having a moment of dismay, they kind of look back to their friends, they gain a smile on their face, renewed vigor, and they keep rushing forward into combat. There are seven of them in total, and all seven of them are still fighting, despite how long it took you to get to even where you are now. You've closed the distance between you and one of these wizards immensely. You are so close to one of them. You could, you could almost reach him. He's probably within 10, 15 feet from you. What is it that you do from here? Um, as I'm nearing the wizard, uh, do I see any of the others coming towards me, or are they just not paying attention to me as I'm going close to the wizard? They are, uh, the, the others just don't notice you yet. You've been, okay. yeah, you've been hiding pretty well. Um, I'm going to go in for an attack. Sure. So you want to rush in for the attack. Do one favor, just roll me another stealth check because you're going to try to get there as quickly and quiet as you can. And you roll the six. Oh, oh man. So Gromming comes rushing in as fast as he can to attack the wizard. And sadly, the wizard notices uh, what, what what's happening last minute and whips around to see Gromming as Gromit, like raises the axis to attack. You're welcome to roll an attack roll. Oh, it's amazing, it's a 20. So Gromit comes rushing forward with the axe and swings 
uh, with a total of a 20 at this wizard. And you can tell this thing is going to collapse this damn wizard's puny chest. And as it comes bearing down, all of a sudden, it is stopped short. Some energy, some something, some power is stopping this axe from being able to hit the wizard. Damn. You, your attack was amazing, and it was true. But this axe has stopped many inches. It's really true, guys. It was a 15. 15 yeah. damage. That's pretty pimp. Yeah, that would have been amazing. Oh. So, sadly, the axes stopped short from um, from hitting him. So, uh, once you once you do that, he looks at you with, like, indignation. Like, uh, you know, it's a human looking at you with indignation. Like, how dare you almost hit me? And so he reaches forward uh, and as saying a spell. And just as he uh, finishes the spell, he reaches out to touch you. But Grauman tries to dodge and move out of the way. And instead of uh, missing, instead of like completely getting out of the way, he accidentally touches Grauman on his face. And there's an explosion on his face as he gets blasted literally backwards, six, seven feet from his head. As all of a sudden he, he thinks his eyeball is thrown from him. He's thrown off his feet and backwards, uh, lying on the ground, writhing in pain. Um, uh, Grauman kind of takes a few moments to let his ears stop ringing. He feels nothing but explosions of pain in his face. Um, wh what does he do at this point? Um, I guess I'm like coming to and I'm finally real. I'm like, uh, once again, because I'm having that moment where I'm kind of blacked out a little bit. I'm listening to the ringing sound. Finally, I get, I get my head back. I'm starting to hear the clamor of war still around me. Um, and I guess I'm going to look to see, do I see my other two friends? Like, what are they doing? Um, you look around to see them and they've actually engaged into combat. They did so with the man that's wearing the, the, the armor that looks to be shining of gold. And not long after they engage with him, they, they, they don't last. They don't last at all. Um, time is kind of passing in chunks because the, 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 the big waves of pain that are happening on Grauman. And um, he's kind of looking around and you know, wince with pain for a second and look back over there. And what he sees is just not very encouraging. The, the numbers are just dropping around these seven warriors. Uh, one of the men that you thought was perhaps a, a priest or a cleric of the like, you realize, is not that, though he's dressed much more simply. He's actually engaging in melee combat with ferocity. So he's, as, as an orc would come up at him to maybe lunge at him with a sword, he would easily sidestep the sword and break their arm and then throw them to the ground and snap their necks and move on to the next. Like these people are just, uh, they're, it looks like exterminators just doing their job. There's very little emotion on them. They're just going about their business with what they're doing. Um, does Grauman try to, to to get up to join the fray? Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna get to uh, he's gonna like slowly get up. He's probably using one arm to get up, and he still has his other on his head, and he's trying to use his his one arm's muscle to pick himself back up. Uh, he kind of shakes his head, but um, with this, he not only is his like half of his face kind of just like messed up right now, and he can barely see out of one of his eyes. Um, he feels re like his head like all the blood starts rushing in his head and he's like for a moment he's just like confused about what's going on around him and he feels like he's losing like a lot of blood but he knows that he needs to help his brothers so he's gonna he's gonna try his best to to get back in there uh he's gonna go towards the towards where his friends were that just got taken out sure so he rushes towards to see that that man with the the big uh the, the glowing armor and rushing at this man grabbing i'm assuming he still had hold of one of his axes so grabbing with both hands rushes forward and tries to attack this man oh that is a beautiful is attack 19. absolutely well this, he he is he is surrounded by orcs and his attention is pulled. Grauman comes rushing up behind him and swings a mighty blow and actually connects with the man Seven points of damage, nice. So he actually connects with the man and um, he, he's been dodging him, uh, blocking blows from time to time, but this one's able to slip past his defenses and Grauman is able to uh, catch through between uh, a couple of plates uh, through his arms and even catch past the chain that's underneath it at the joint. And you can see that Grauman is, uh, you can see, you can hear the, the sickening sounds and you can see the blood start to trickle down the uh, side of the ax as you know that you got through and you actually hit him. So, so Grauman is satisfied with the fact that he delivered that blow. However, almost immediately afterwards, he's bashed across the side of the head with 
with such a force as he's never felt uh, as the shield comes whipping around. And as he's staggering backwards, trying to find his footing, uh, the sword comes, uh, he comes lunging forward with his sword through Grauman's side. And Grauman kind of blinks with his one good eye right now as he looks down and sees the sword in him and looks back up and sees this man, this, this human man, um, and kind of stumbles backwards, allowing the sword to fall out of him and just lies on the grounds and, and lies there bleeding. Um, as time passes and the blood continues to flow from Grauman, the sounds are louder, they're quieter, they're in, they're out. The only sound that really seems to, to stand out above the rest is, is the sound of music that, that's playing in the background. It's this beautiful harmonizing noise. Um, it seems as though that one person that was in the rock, he's, he switched to playing a lute and it's, it's just a, a beautiful sound. It's, a, it's almost soothing. It's almost welcoming as Grauman starts to lose his consciousness and drift away. It's the last thing that Grauman hears as, as he just finally falls, seemingly dead. We're Veronis, man. All the feels. I just want to see, like, hashtag the feels. <laughs> In indeterminate amount of time later on, Grauman comes to. When he wakes up, he can't even express the amount of pain that he's feeling, what it is that's, you, you can't even, you can't even put it to words. When he's finally able to blink open his one good eye, he's, he's able to look down and see that he is just saturated in blood and all around him are the corpses of all these, of all these orcs. He's able to see just chaos everywhere. But more important than, than that, even more important than the pain, that he feels in his face, in his body, in his side, not even knowing how it is that he's alive right now. Grauman just feels this throbbing pain in his head and this, this constant confusion. Like, oh, I, ugh. And it just, it, it, it's just constant. I mean, again, there's, there's no words to put it together. So as he eventually is able to push himself up and kind of, wander around, uh, hobbling, crawling most of the time. Every time he even moves the slightest bit on the side where he's stabbed, he collapses to the ground. Anytime he puts too much effort there, um, he collapses as to the ground. As I'm moving around, can I see anything else that's around me other than like, obviously the, my fallen brethren? You can see that your, the homes of your, your tribe have been burnt to the grounds and you can see that your brethren are dead. Uh, off in the distance, and we're talking far off in the distance, you can see um, there is some epic combat that must be happening because there are just large explosions so far off that, I mean, it, it takes you several minutes to realize where it is, but it's actually by way of, of the, the ruler of this land's home, by way of that castle. You see these large explosions and you can hear uh, shouts from even that many miles away. You can you can witness this. But other than that, there's nothing in your immediate surrounding beyond uh, the corpses, the burnt homes, and the carrion that are feeding off of them. Oh, man. Um, whew, that's crazy. So, uh, is, is it so far away from me that I wouldn't be able to make it that way towards them? No, it is it is so many miles that like you're confused right now. And as I said, it takes minutes at a time to even put together what is happening over there. But when you finally do, it's you know that that is just so far. It takes at least a day to travel to your uh, to the leader's home. OK, um, I guess I'm going to try to use medicine on myself or something like that. Um, sure. Try to like mend myself up so I can try to. Even if I have to like take someone else's cloth off them to wrap myself up, well. Sure. Um. So as a total of an eight, so Grauman tries to bandage himself up, but he honestly just every time he tries to do anything, it's the areas are just in so much pain. He just winces from it, and he's not able to do much. He he honestly thinks he might be doing more harm than good, and so uh, decides to abandon it halfway through. He gets up and 
uh, continues to look around, and after some time, he's able to find the uh, the body of his family. First, he finds the body of one of his brothers, but but eventually he's able to find the one he's really looking for. He's able to find the body of his father. So, coming across the body of your father, how how is it that a Grama reacts to this? Uh, Grama comes over to his father and he's like checking to see if he's if he's alive, which he's hoping that he is, but he knows that he's not. And deep in his heart, um, he moves forward and he kind of kneels down slowly, falls to the ground. Um, closes his father's eyes with his hands and kind of puts his head on, on his father's chest. How did my father die? Can I tell by looking at him? Um, you can see specifically, you can tell by looking at the wounds on him, how large they are and, and just the carnage that happened from it. It was obviously that man with that ax that, that did this to okay. your father. Um, oddly, I, I do know how he died because I can, I can tell by the, the slashes that mm. it was an ax. And so I have a good idea of who it is. But for some reason, I, I'm, I as I'm laying there and I'm trying to remember the prayer to group, I can't. I just can't remember it at all. I'm like I sit there for a moment and I just can't. And because I can't, I just kind of like make this loud shout, and I'm just like, <laughs> and I pull my head back down, and uh, he tries to hold back tears, but they come anyway. Hmm. And. Um... I think that's where we'll end it. Damn. <laughs> that's way too serious. <laughs> I <know. laughs> um, hope you guys enjoyed it. I think like uh, we, we knew this coming in that we wanted to kind of show a different side of, uh, of Grauman and how he got to be where he was. And uh, he used to be kind of a, a smart young fellow until he got smashed in the face. And uh, you know, he has that scar to forever remember all that by. And so I uh, hopefully... We'll see what Delric has in store for us for the future. And maybe some of these characters or uh, some of these enemies might show up in the future. Thank you so much, Delric, for joining us and helping out with all of these. And thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this. And if you want to see more prologues, this is supposed to be the last one. But if you really want to see them, definitely give this video a thumbs up. And we'll see you guys next week for another episode of The Lost Initiative. Bye.